human beings uh, are the only species that is aware of its mortality. So it's this idea that the source of human neurosis is not sexual repression, as Sigmund Freud would have told you, but that it's actually uh, the suppression of death anxiety. Death anxiety is the source of all of our malaise, all of our neurosis, both conscious and subconscious. It's the source of our greatest creativity, but also our most destructive tendencies in our existential despair. Because we are aware that we are mortal, it causes all sorts of cognitive stress. And Ernest Becker says that the only answer to the absurdity uh, of this situation is uh, to come up with sort of uh, illusions. Um, and so he talks about the three solutions to the problem of death has conceived of. One of them, is, of course, is the religious solution, which is this idea that, you know, you create a narrative where you live in heaven with God forever and you'll be saved and, you know, that gives you that immortality. As we have become more scientific and secular, we realize that's not going to sugarcoat it for us anymore. Uh, the second solution to the problem of death is the romantic solution. Now, the romantic solution involves deifying your lover. That's like the modern pop culture theme that influences all the pop songs. It says, she's like the wind, she's my salvation, she is the sun. You know, we, we turn our lovers into gods. You know, Alan Harrington wrote The Immortalist, says, when, when in love, we get to step out of the moving walkway that's carry, carrying everyone else towards death, and ins instead we get to be gods outside of time, commingling with each other in the eternal now. So you turn your lover into God, into a goddess, and, and, and that provides respite from the human situation for a while, but ultimately no relationship can bear the burden of godhood. Your, your gods will reveal their clay feet, and then their frailties will remind you and mirror your own frailties. Um, they'll remind you of your own frailty, and so that's where the relationship starts to go sour, when, when she can no longer save you. And then the third solution to the problem of death, he calls the creative solution. That, of course, involves wanting to create a work of transcendent value that will outlive you symbolically and grant you that immortality in a metaphorical, symbolic way. Of course, you know, that has been, that, that, that might be in the form of a statue or a published work or discovering a vaccine, and that sort of inspires the need to leave a legacy. It's really just a form of disguised, symbolic immortality. If you ask me about the human condition, I think, yeah, it, it can be tragic, but also rich and beautiful, and I don't think there's anything beautiful about death or dying. Yeah, it sucks. We gotta fix that.